Hello, and welcome to EDHREC's Upping the Average, where we take a commander's average deck list as compiled by the data on EDHREC and make some swaps to it to help take it from a good start to a great one. Let's talk about the spell Harmonicon. Varen Voice of Duality is the second most popular commander from Strixhaven, and for good reason. She duplicates our Magecraft triggers. Casting and copying spells can trigger all sorts of effects, and Varen amplifies them all. Not only that, but with her own triggered ability, each spell we cast will pump her up twice. Varen's page shows us a storm is on the horizon. From gutter snipe to electrostatic field, casting a single spell can deal two to four damage to our opponents, absolutely melting enemy life totals. Young Pyromancer and Talrand will spit out two tokens at a time instead of just one. We're set up to cast a lot of spells in one turn and reap the rewards. Let's get right to it and take Varen's average deck list via the average deck feature and import it to the Architect deck building website. As always, any swaps we make to this list must either keep the total price of the deck cost neutral or else help lower the price of the overall deck. What a dance. This is a tight list. If you're starting from this point, you will do really well. The spells we have are some old favorites, with a particular emphasis on cantrips. Almost every spellsinger deck likes cantrips, but especially Varen. A handful of these creatures have some surprisingly fun utility, too. I'm not, like, usually a fan of cards like Jorien, for example, but she'll draw you two cards on the second cast, and that's pretty good. Our commander also gives Krark two bites at the apple. Even if the spell goes back to our hand, it's probably a cheap enough spell that we can just cast it again and get even more Magecraft triggers. Oh, and Birgi gives us two mana per spell cast. Dang. And the bigger spells we see facilitate the casting of even more spells, either by adding mana or digging even harder to refill our hand or just casting them outright for free, so we can continue our spell slinging storm. Note how few lands there are in this deck, too, and how low the mana costs are in this deck. This would normally be a problem in other decks, but this list is so low to the ground that it manages to get away with it. Oh, and our Enchantments Artifacts and Lone Planeswalker are just as delicious. Doubling up any of these effects is really, really nasty. Two either Flux Reservoir triggers will climb so fast it hurts. Aria of Flame has been a good card for some decks and maybe dubious for others, but there's zero question about it for Varen. The first spell we cast will trigger Aria twice, dealing 1 plus 2 damage. The second spell has us dealing 3 plus 4 damage. By the time we've cast just 3 cantrips, Aria is blasting for 5 plus 6. That's terrifying. Oh, and then there's Ral. Sweet, sweet Ral. He's the original Magecraft card, triggering not just when we cast a spell, but also when we copy them. One spell will have Ral dealing two damage, but a copied spell has him dealing four. And if we start to storm off, including with actual storm cards, let's just say that lightning does strike the same spot twice. So we're a little more familiar with the plan of this deck now and its primary components. Lots of tiny cantrips and or mana refunds that keep us casting, plus a spell slinger payoff to double up, which all fall into the service of creating that one big turn. We're not a persistent value type of deck. We assemble a turn where things just pop off. To that end, let's see how we can tune this deck up just a little more to make it a smidge better. We'll do this in three sections. Let's start off by examining some creatures. I'd also like to gauge our interaction, which I think might be just a little bit low. And finally, I want to spice up the deck even more by fleshing out Varen's combative potential. First up, let's talk about some creatures. One of my favorite aspects of deck building is the role that support cards can play in a themed deck. For example, in an artifact deck, there are tons of just amazing enchantments out there that can be used to amplify all of those artifact synergies. But every one of those enchantments that you put into the deck takes away a potential card slot for an artifact, lowering the overall density of artifacts in the deck and potentially causing the deck to suffer as a result. It's a really tough line to balance. Here in the Spellslinger strategy, ironically, one of the categories that we have to pay attention to most is the creatures. Although a bunch of these creatures are amazing at amplifying our spells, they do also run the risk of making us stumble when we're trying to spin through multiple instants and sorceries. After spending some time with the list, I realized that the cost reducers were actually one such culprit. I didn't think this would be the case at first, but I ran the numbers, and Baral and Goblin Electromancer only have 19 total cards in the deck that they can reduce the cost of. That's maybe half of our total instants and sorceries. These don't do anything to the cost of our cantrips, and we have so many cantrips. Of the non-land cards in our deck, these don't do anything to over 40 of them. And, spoiler alert, by the time we're finished with this list, we'll have even fewer cards that these creatures would assist. These are good cards for spellslinger strategies with mana costs that start a little higher to help chain multiple spells in one turn, but it turns out we're just not really struggling on that front, so we can cut these to make room for even more spells down the line. 
Dualcaster Mage is our next culprit. I like copying spells as much as the next person, but this deck doesn't need this ability to occur in creature form. If we want to copy a spell, we should do so with a spell. It would generate more Magecraft triggers that way, which our cards would be much more grateful for. Finally, we've got some great spell trigger payoff cards in here, but Murmuring Mystic strikes me as the least impressive. Two tokens per cast is cool, but I think it's a testament to the efficiency of this deck, and especially the impact of all the other Magecraft cards, that the Mystic happens to be the least interesting of all those options. Now, we've made a bit more room for spells, but as it turns out, I'm actually adding one creature here too. Runaway Steamkin is running right into this deck. Collecting two counters per cast means that this will refund our mana very consistently. Heads up for the rules on how to make this work. If it's already got two counters on it, and then we cast a spell while Varen is in play, the Steamkin will get two triggers. We let one resolve, then immediately remove the three counters to make mana. Then we can let the next trigger resolve, and since it doesn't have any counters on it, we can resupply. This card joins up with Bergy and Stormkiln Artist as a very impressive means of chaining many spells together in one huge turn. Quick and breezy with the creatures, so let's move to section two and talk about interaction. A deck like this can be so efficient that it kind of gets tunnel vision. We have to find a way to ride that line between cards that propel our forward momentum and also cards that get rid of speed bumps across the battlefield. First up, I spy a Pongify in this list, but not a rapid hybridization. I'd like to get that in here. One mana removal is kind of amazing, and perfectly in line with the efficiency this commander is after. That makes me look a little more closely at a card like Reinterpret, though. This is a pretty interesting counterspell, but I don't think it's one that this commander wants. For one thing, it's kind of inconsistent. We never know what or when our opponents will play something that we want to counter, let alone whether we'll have something in hand that we want to play for free at that time. For another thing, it's also four mana, and that's a lot to leave up, honestly. And finally, while it sounds cool for this to clip some six mana card across the field and for us to cheat in some huge enchantment, the reality is that that won't actually happen very much. The overwhelming majority of cards that we will cast off this are themselves only going to be like one or two mana. I think this card could do some great work in other decks, but it's just a little out of place in this one. I'm also going to make a Judicious Swap out for Counterspell in exchange for Stubborn Denial. If you're tighter on the budget, pretend I'm talking about Narset's Reversal instead. Or if you prefer, cut the Negate in exchange for this one. I'm choosing Counterspell because, in my experience, we're good countering non-creature spells the majority of the time anyway. And this deck has a lot of one-mana spells that make the individual color pips a little more choosy. But to the point at hand, Stubborn Denial helps protect Veyron because as soon as we cast it, Veyron's Magecraft takes her to four power, satisfying the Ferocious and countering a spell for just one mana. Nice. And that's actually all I have for this section. Like I said, overall, I really like where this deck is at. There is just one more thing I want to tweak, though, so let's go to section three. Varen deserves more of the spotlight, plain and simple. She's the voice of duality. She can play a supporting role, but she's also a fantastic leading lady. So let's make sure that we remember that her abilities don't just amplify other cards, but herself, too. Let's find some ways to make sure that this star can shine. First, here's our final cut. Thrill of Possibilities is nice, but unnecessary. Our blue cards are good enough at drawing cards that we don't need this one as badly. So, with that out of the way, now we've made some room for a few more spicy spells. This deck contains an Expedite, but there is not yet a Crimson Wisps in here. That seems silly. Why not both? Both is good. They refund themselves and they can be used right away on Veyron to pump her up for a surprise attack. And that's the real deal, too. Veyron climbs up to 6, 8, 12 power with ease. Like, it's kind of insane. Remember that this is not a deck where we eke out value over time. What we do is position ourselves to go from 0 to 100 in a single turn. So in addition to giving her haste, I think we also ought to make her very hard to block by giving her unblockable, for example. These spells are cantrips, immediately refunding themselves so we can chain through bunches of little spells at once. And they are a direct line of commander damage. It really couldn't get any better. Well, maybe it could, actually, because the other thing Varen likes is Storm. That's why we have Grapeshot on the deck, after all. Every copy pumps our commander up by two power. So this is cheeky, but I think I'm in love with the card Ground Rift in this deck. For one mana, we could potentially give our commander an additional plus six, plus ten, plus eighteen, I'm not even kidding, while negating any blockers in our way. With a Storm Kiln Artist in play, this is a one mana ritual that completely refuels us. With Ral in play, this card might legitimately deal upwards of ten damage, and it's all just for one mana. And that's it for my swaps, because the deck was just in such a great state already. But let's quickly visit some honorable mentions if you're adapting this deck even further. First, I want to call out some budget recommendations if you're not in the mood for some of those $20 cards. You can easily knock off another 80 bucks from this deck with the following swaps. 
First, Aetherflux Reservoir is one of the best storm payoff cards out there, but you know what? Sentinel Tower is not the worst budget replacement in the world. This card is not Aetherflux, but I mean, few things are. I don't think the tower is a suitable option for every Spellslinger deck out there because it can be tough to arrange the one big turn in a way that would suit the tower's needs, but Veyron in particular makes the tower trigger twice, and that math adds up really fast. Plus, you save like 20 bucks. Thousand Year Storm is kind of pricey too, so don't sweat it if you don't got it. But you know what? Another card I was really tempted to add to the deck is Jelectrode. Just like Thermo Alchemist, we can tap this card, cast a spell, and Veyron will supply it with two untapped triggers. We can let one resolve, untapping the Jelectrode, then tap it again, and then let the other trigger resolve. Again, this adds up really, really fast. So I hope you're in the mood to tap and untap things a whole bunch of times. Jessica's Will, Primal Amulet, and Cyclonic Rift aren't cheap cards either. They are compelling. Absolutely, but no one needs to drop a bunch of money on this deck to make Veyron super awesome. So here are some budget replacement ideas. A simple impulse helps us dig for what we need at a low, low cost. A reality shift helps keep enemies at bay too. And finally, Leap jumps in with our other cantrips to make Veyron scary big and scary evasive. So how about the opposite situation, where you just want to optimize the deck even more? Well, here are a few cards that I think is important to note for upgrading Varen in the future. Mystic Remora is a very efficient draw effect that slots right into our low-cost curve. Bonus Round is also kind of stunning when it gets to go off, which this deck makes very easy to arrange. I've seen players also really enjoy Isochron Scepter in this deck as well, because it has so very many targets to choose from. Finally, a lot of players are upgrading into Underworld Breach and Brain Freeze combos here. Brain Freeze can be used to mill ourselves, providing fodder to fuel the Underworld Breach so that we can just cast the Brain Freeze again, which pumps up Veyron the whole time, or let Stormkiln Artist supply us with oodles and oodles of mana until our whole library is in our graveyard, allowing us to cast basically any spell we want, and with the storm count super high. It's not hard to imagine victory at that point. So if any of these options compel you, I have a sweeping statement to make about the path of potential upgrades. Lower the curve, with the sole exceptions of Cyclonic Rift, Thousand Year Storm, Mana Geyser, and Mizzix's Mastery, the highest priority cuts are any cards that regularly cost five or more mana to cast. I don't mean cards with mana value five or higher, I mean the actual mana that is spent to cast them. The cards shown here are good enough to absolutely justify holding on to, but this is a deck that can tune and tune and tune and tune and tune down exceptionally well, because every one mana cantrip is a source of fuel that will also help us find the individually powerful cards in our deck more quickly. We don't need a high density of payoffs when we have such an extremely high rate of card velocity. So my recommendation when optimizing is to find some of those key big spells to hold on to and to cut down on the mana curve to turn this deck into a high speed bullet train. Alrighty, there we have it. The final list can be found in the description box below with the cuts in the maybe board. I hope you've enjoyed Veyron's performance, and if you have any other techniques that you'd like to share with your fellow spell slingers, make sure you leave those recommendations in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching.